Hello 2D and welcome to your last lesson in the polynomials unit. Uh, our topic today is factoring special quadratics and our goal I can recognize difference of squares and perfect squares and factor easily and appropriately. So we're going to take a look at factoring special quadratics. Uh, and remember we were expanding special quadratics a while ago and remember that when we expanded this uh, type of special quadratic. Remember the way it's special is that they're exactly the same bracket except one has a plus and one has a minus. And when we expanded that out we saw that the middle terms cancelled. We got 4x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 9. And at that time I told you that it was perfectly useless to even do that in the middle you should be able to look at those two brackets and recognize that that is a, going to be uh, one of our special cases where the middle terms cancel and so you just do the first two terms and the last terms and you get 4x squared minus 9. Uh, we need to be able to recognize one of these situations so it's easy to go back the other way. We want to be able to recognize that this is a difference of squares and the two brackets are going to be exactly the same thing. We need to be able to look at this and say, oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I need the front two things to be exactly the same, so it must be 2x and 2x. And I need the back bracket to be the same, so it must be 3 and 3. And in order to get the middle terms to cancel each other out, one has to be a positive and one has to be a minus. Um, so here are the three things you're looking for in this situation. The first one that should clue you in that it's a difference of squares is that it's a binomial. There's only two terms. That should be the first clue that it's a difference of squares. The second clue is that it's actually a difference. There has to be that minus sign in there for it to be a difference of squares. And the third one is all the variables and coefficients are perfect squares. Now keep in mind once you spot them then you just need to take a square root of each term uh, put them in two sets of brackets, one with a plus and one with a minus. Now, keep this in mind. A variable is a perfect square if its exponent, whoop, and I shouldn't have, try to keep my grammar correct, there shouldn't be an apostrophe there, if its exponent is even. To take the square root, you just divide the exponent by two. So, to talk about that just a little bit more, um, say I have n to the eighth, that's a perfect square because I can do n to the fourth times n to the fourth uh, and get n to the eight because we add them. So all I have to do is half that in order to get um, what the square root of it is. Now if I have something like n to the seventh that is not a perfect square. There's nothing I can multiply by itself well n times n to the 3.5 times n to the 3.5 but having an exponent um, with a decimal in it is not something that we deal with in 2D. Okay, So it can't be odd. Any even number exponent we can just split in two to find its square root. So now we're going to take a look at, whoop, too far. We're going to take a look at a few examples. Um, we're going to do our checklist. Uh, is it a binomial? Yep. Is it a difference? Sure is. There's the difference right there. Um, and are they perfect squares? Well, x squared, but is definitely a perfect square and 9 is a perfect square so this is going to be x plus 3 x minus 3. Once you spot them they are so easy to factor. Uh, looking, oh, let's go down to number 2. That seems to be the logical way to do it. Uh, is it a binomial? Sure is. Is it a difference? Sure is. Are they perfect squares? Well, 25 is 5 times 5, and 16 is 4 times 4. So, yeah, those are perfect squares. So we just need to take the square root of each term and put them in brackets. So that's going to be 5x plus 4, 5x minus 4. Down to number 3. Does it bother us that the, that the p is there? It shouldn't. Um, we're still just looking. Is it a binomial? Yep, it's a binomial. Is it a difference? Sure is a difference. Are these perfect squares? Well, 121 is 11 squared and 16 is 4 squared. So, yep, they sure are. So, we need to take the square root 11 plus 4p 
11 minus 4p. See how easy this is? Okay, now looking down here, oh, we got a problem here. Um, they are a binomial, it is a difference, but 6 and 9 are not perfect squares and neither is x cubed. Uh, what's the most we can do here? We could take out a common factor of 3. So if I take out a common factor of 3, I get 2x cubed minus 3p squared, and there's nothing else I can do there. That's the only way I can factor that one. Going down to number 5. This one doesn't look too promising either because I've got an x cubed. Uh, it is a difference, however, and it is a binomial. Uh, well, if I look for that common factor, I'm going to take out a common factor of 3x because they've both got an x, and 3 goes into 27. So I'm going to take out that common factor of 3x, and if I take 3x out of here, I'm left with x squared, and if I take 3x out of here, I'm left with minus 9. Oh, and look at that bracket. x squared minus 9, that is one that we already factored. 3x times x minus 3, x plus 3. That is definitely a difference of squares. Going up to number 6. 9x to the 8th minus 25. Uh, is it a binomial? Sure is. Is it a difference? Yep, it is. Is everything perfect squares? Well, since our exponent is even, we know it's a perfect square. 9 is 3 times 3, and 25 is 5 times 5, so it looks like a difference of squares. So we're going to go 3x, and remember we have to half that, so it'll be 3x to the, ooh, that looks like the ninth. 3x to the 4th, uh, minus 5. 3x to the 4th. <laughs> my pen's not cooperating with me. 3x to the 4th uh, plus 5. Now down here, is it a binomial? Sure is. Is the difference? No, it's not. Uh, can I take out a common factor? No, I can't. Uh, this one's not possible. Now the next one. Is it a binomial? Sure is. Is it a difference? Sure is. Um, are these perfect squares? Yep, looks like it. So let's have a look. Uh, I know that I'm going to need 4x squared plus 9 and 4x squared minus 9. Now that 4x squared minus 9 can be factored further. 4x squared plus 9 is not a difference of squares, but 4x squared minus 9 is. So I can break that part down into two more brackets because this is also a difference of squares. So 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. And then we're going to go down to this one. This one's the toughest one here. Is this a difference of squares? Well, yeah, it is. Even though it's not really a binomial because we got some expressions. But here we have a bracket that's squared, subtract another bracket that's squared. So I have two squareds with a minus between them. So that is definitely a difference of squares. Now, how do we factor this? Same way as we did before, except I'm going to use square brackets here because we're going to still have those small brackets inside. I need to take the square root of this. Well, to take the square root of m plus 2 squared, all we have to do is take the squared off. So this is going to be m plus 2 and m plus 2, so that when I multiply the two things together, I get m plus 2 squared. And the square root of the other one is going to be m minus 4 and m minus 4. And then we know that there has to be a plus and a minus between them in order for there not to be a middle term. Uh, now I can simplify even further because in those brackets, m plus 2 plus m minus 4, I can just take the bracket off, and I can take the brackets off of the inside here. Remember, signs are going to change here, though, so it's going to be minus m plus 4. And then simplifying in each bracket, I've got 2m's, so 2m, and plus 2 and minus 4 gives me minus 2. And in the other bracket, the m's cancel each other out, and I have 6. And I'm not quite factored yet because I can take a 2 out of this bracket. So I'm going to take a 2 out of this bracket and combine it with that 6 to give me a monomial out front of 12. 
and then taking the two out of that bracket just becomes m minus one. So that one was the most involved. Okay, moving on from difference of squares, what about a perfect square? Well, a perfect square trinomial is one that factors down to a square binomial. For example, x plus five all squared. In other words, when you factor it, you get two identical brackets. So remember the shortcut to squaring a binomial? I'm gonna go over it. When you square a binomial, you square the first term, which is gonna give us four x squared you square the last term which gives us plus nine but there is that middle term where we multiply those two things together that gives us six x and then to get it over to here we have to times it by two so that's plus twelve x and remember we times it by two because there are two middle terms they're both identical to six x but there are two of them so that was the squaring the binomial so now to recognize a perfect square binomial First, or trinomial, uh, the first term needs to be a perfect square. So if we're looking at this one, 4x squared is definitely a perfect square. Uh, the last term needs to be a perfect square, and the middle term is double the product of the first and last term square root. Now that's a little bit wordy, but let's have a look at it. If you don't happen to spot the perfect square trinomial in the first place, other factoring methods for complex trinomials will work for them as well. So you can factor this any way you want, um, but if you factor it and the brackets are exactly the same, your last step should be actually to write it as a perfect square, um, so a bracket with a squared on it. So we're going to determine if these things are perfect squares. Okay, if they are perfect squares, the first thing we need to do is check to see if the first and last terms are actually perfect squares. And they are. 9x squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square. So now we take the square root, 3x and 5. We multiply those two things together and double it. Do we get 30x? Well, 3x times 5 is 15, doubled is 30. So this is, yep, it is definitely a perfect square trinomial, and in fact it's going to be 3x minus 5 squared, and we know it's minus because the middle term is negative. Uh, let's check this one out here. Well, first term is perfect, last term is perfect. Uh, ooh, except this, negative 81 isn't a perfect square. Positive 81 is a perfect square, but negative numbers are not perfect squares. This is not a perfect square. And how about this one down here? 2x squared plus 16xy plus 32y squared. Well, the first term uh, is not a perfect square. The last term is not a perfect square, but maybe it's been hidden. Maybe I can take out a common factor. Can I take a 2 out of everything? Uh, x squared plus 8xy plus, um, taking 2 out of 32 is 16y squared. Now my first term and my last term are perfect squares. So let's take the square root. This will just be x, and this will be 4y. If I multiply those two things together and then double it, I get 4xy doubled is 8xy, which is exactly what we have there. So since that since I took the square root of each term, multiplied them together, and doubled them, and I get the middle term, then this is definitely a perfect square trinomial, and I should write it as such. It will be x plus 4y all squared. And we know it's plus because this middle term is a positive, so it has to be a positive there. Okay, so we got one more thing to look at. Hopefully this will be pretty quick and then we will be done. Example three, nine x squared plus bx plus 14 is a perfect square. What is the value of b? Well, if I told you that it starts with nine x squared plus bx plus 14, um, and we wanna do, we'll take the square root of this one. Oh, this one can't possibly be, be a perfect square because 14, is not a perfect square. Let's change it so that it is. I think this was meant to be 16. Little goof up there. So 9x squared plus bx plus 16 is a perfect square. So I need a 3x there and a 4 there. Now remember to get the middle term I have to multiply these two things together which gives me 12x and then I have to double it to get 24x, so b must be equal 
to 24. And it could also be equal to negative 24 um, because it, if b is negative, that just changes the sign in here. So it could also be a negative 24. Um, so our two brackets would be 3x plus 4 all squared or uh, 3x minus 4 all squared. Um, and in this case, b would equal positive 24, and in this case, b would equal negative 24. And that is it for difference of squares and perfect squares. And that concludes the polynomials unit.